Hi, self-driving fans. Last month, I published my review of Tesla FSD 10.8. On a simple suburban loop, I found it making mistakes, some serious at every intersection and complex point on the route. It didn't get a good score. If you want to watch the video, I'll wait. Later, I got 10.9 and took it out on that loop and on a new drive. So you'll find me negative again. So negative that some people think I dislike Tesla. Actually, not only do I own a Tesla and some Tesla stock, I want all Robocar teams to deliver this technology as soon as they can. I am critical when I don't think Tesla's on the best path to success and wide deployment. First, the good news. It did better on a few of the areas it had problems with in 10.8. The most change was this right turn with a dedicated lane. Previously, on a red light, it would just stop and sit there not seeing it's had its own lane. Now it sees the bollards and figures that out. You may have seen another recent video of 10.9 where the car actually hit a large bollard, though. At this problem area, two times out of ten, the earlier version moved into the left lane for no reason, and then turned left once right through the red left arrow. Both of my trips through here with 10.9, it briefly tried to enter the left turn lane again, but changed its mind and went straight. This may or may not be an improvement on the disturbing randomness of the system. With the problematic left turn lanes entering Apple headquarters, it seemed to do better. On 10.8, it would usually wait until the last moment to figure out that it had to get right and do so. But a couple of times it didn't figure it out and got into a no-win position. In one case, it went through the red arrow to turn left until I intervened. On these two new passes, it seemed to identify that it should get over a bit sooner. Of course, if it had a map, as I outline on my video of mapping, which you'll see above, it would have been just driving in the right lane to start. So it would not have needed to make a last minute lane change, which is trouble when there is traffic. Next, I tried a new drive a short trip to Safeway. The result was not good. We begin with a right turn on red in it, on an arterial. Here it blocked the crosswalk and just never had the confidence to make use of the long gaps to make the turn. I had to nudge it. Not long after that, it stopped hard for no reason well ahead of a light. But now we get to the scary part, where we will see not fewer than three times I had to intervene to prevent a collision three times in just four miles, three times just at this intersection. The first has an excuse of sorts but begins with a moderately complex turn onto El Camino Real, the main road of Silicon Valley. The right thing to do is to get into the second lane from the left, which is marked on the road as the lane to go across the first street in the intersection. The Tesla enters it, but once it starts moving, it immediately veers to the right and into the wrong lane, then crosses Fremont and quickly crosses two lanes to make that left. As it is doing so, this time the light turns yellow, so it stops quite badly, with the car past the crosswalk and into the intersection. I manually back the car up. The guy in behind me backs up to give me some room, fortunately. Now, I'm stopped at the red light. Having intervened, I must release the brake and reactivate FSD. The result is terror. The car lurches forward, ignoring the red light, and heading into cross traffic. I quickly react to intervene. This time I wait until the light turns green before I reactivate FSD, and it makes the turn okay. I puzzle over what happened. Did activating FSD when stopped at the light somehow signal the car that it should go, in spite of both a red light and speeding cross traffic in front of it? There's no way that's right. The rest of the drive down El Camino is okay, with a couple of important landmarks until we get to the left turn into the store. I didn't buy my Tesla at this Tesla store, even though it's walking distance of my house. 
I was in Korea at the time, watching the nightlife when the new model went on sale and I ordered it online. Later, a driver brought it to my home, right from the factory, and it arrived just as I was watching a SpaceX Falcon 9 launch go up right from my driveway. Yes, you can see them regularly from Silicon Valley, and I watch most of them. We made the delivery driver wait a few minutes, but it was a very Elon Musk day. Here it decides to go when the left lane is clear, and then stops in the middle of the road because a right turner, who had his signal on, is going to use the same mall entrance. Fortunately, there's no traffic, so I let it work it out. Once in the parking lot, it gets erratic, as I might expect, so I disengage and park. After shopping, it's darker and time to go home. The trip on El Camino is driven well, and we get back to the intersection of the previous prevented collision. Now we'll get two collisions in short order. It moves to the right turn lane, which has many cars in it, but it drives like there's nobody there. Boy, is it going fast? High speed to the rear car, even though it sees it on the screen, and I intervene. Right after I turn the corner, though, I know there's going to be a problem. There is a short stretch to another intersection, and after that intersection, the three lanes suddenly merge down to two. Now, locals know that this is always a tough merge, but the Tesla doesn't have a map and doesn't see the signs. When the second light turns green with lots of traffic, it can't see that the lane vanishes ahead. The map it builds is wrong. It thinks the lane continues. Suddenly the car in front merges left, revealing that the lane is ending immediately. The Tesla is still speeding and I have to hit the brakes as there's nowhere to go. Well, three averted crashes in just a few miles of driving in just one intersection, plus several other mistakes. While the update has improvements, as we should hope it should, it's still in extremely poor condition. There were several who disagreed with my power review, where I gave FSD an F. In truth, it's not even a close call, and it continues to get that gray. Any of these actions would result in immediate interruption of a driving test, even for a teenager on a learner's permit. To get a C, you'd have to drive 25 years without mistakes like these. To get a B would require driving a whole human lifetime, because that's roughly the record of a typical human, about one police-reported accident per lifetime. An A is reserved for being much better than a human. Tesla FSD still has a long way to go before it can even think about getting a D. Make major mistakes right out of the driveway, and you're a long, long way. Tesla calls this a beta, but it's no beta yet. It's a prototype, and Tesla is still doing major rewrites on it and plans more, which immediately disqualifies it from beta status. But we grade it on what it's a prototype of, namely a full self-driving system. If Tesla wants to use that name, it asks to be judged by it. It's a shame because it could be much better. The mistake at the merge and several others would be easily averted with maps, which, as explained in my video on Tesla and maps, see it in the description, are cheap, scalable, and robust against changes in the road. It's much more scalable to work in just one city and grow than to drive very badly in every city. The cause of the other mistakes is unclear, but one thing that's true is that no car with good software and a LiDAR would make them. As I said before, I want robocars out on the road as soon as we can make them safe. I wish Tesla were following a better path to that. Instead, it has made a long-shot bet on hoping for a real breakthrough in computer vision, whose date of arrival nobody can name. It is trying to take the cheap long-shot bet rather than the effort that starts more expensive but gets cheaper later. That's actually very odd. In 2006, Elon Musk laid out what he called the Tesla Master Plan. He described how he would start with a very expensive specialty sports car, then make an expensive luxury sedan and build the brand and get the experience. Then he would release an affordable car, 
the Model 3, and eventually an economy car. Start expensive first, then do cheap later. He carried out that plan to make the best cars and trounce the old world car industry. For unknown reasons, when it comes to self-driving, he has reversed that strategy. In 2016, he declared that they would try to make self-driving work with the sensors of 2016, mainly low-cost cameras and a radar he later abandoned. The route that starts expensive and gets cheaper later, LiDAR and maps, was not for Tesla. I want them to go back to the master plan. Expensive first, then scale later, and use their other advantages to be a real player in this space and give other competitors, the software companies, not the car OEMs, a run for their money. For now, I don't get this wish. I may even mock Tesla with some satire. Maybe Tesla will get the breakthrough it is dep depending on and show the world. It's not impossible, but it's probably not the way to bet. My articles about Tesla always generate hot debate and strong opinions. I welcome your polite discussion in the comments here on my blog with the emphasis on polite. I request you check out the FAQ link in the description before repeating the comments and questions of others, though. Thanks, and I hope you subscribe.